Hi, this is Shadi and today's video it's gonna be about the father of Kudo, Takashi Azuma. Originally I was gonna do a Judo vs Kudo video but uh, very similar to Sumo and Nippon Kenpo I need to talk a little bit about the background of the art, particularly this one because the founder was not only a brilliant karateka but also a judoka so uh, when you see something like kudo in action you would see a lot of brilliant takedowns you would see also joint locks and uh, a little bit more than nippon kempo there's no armor uh, it's a little bit more hardcore i would say uh, there is like karate as the foundation very similar to kenpo but the judo in it is i would say it's far more uh, pronounced so uh, this is a man that wanted to look for more practicality and safety at the same time so you'd have the karate mindset very similar to Sawayama in terms of practicality but also safety and ethics very similar to Kano Sensei so uh, Takashi Azuma was born in 1949 in the city of Kazenuma in Japan he is currently the president of the Kudo International Federation. He is still very much alive. He holds ninth degree black belt in Kyokushin Karate and also a third degree in Kodokan Judo and a ninth degree in Kudo. So he started training uh, Judo at first. So before even uh, touching uh, the Karate mats, he was already a Judoka. He started training at the age of 16 back in 1965 and in 1972 after uh, his service with the Japanese uh, army he started training in Kyokushin Karate so the same year he would reach his first degree black belt in Karate at the Waseda University so uh, fast forward to 1981 he founded his own martial art because he was not satisfied uh, with whatever Kyokushin was bringing he uh, had serious head injury and also it was very common in Kyokushin, particularly the head butts and also uh, the head kicks. Uh, he wanted something that makes the fighter uh, very like, practical but at the same time he was looking for safety as I mentioned. So uh, he was a small fighter and he was at a disadvantage compared to the taller ones in terms of getting head kicked. So. Uh, he had many nasty blows to the face. He broke his nose several times to the point that it was shattered. Um, in his book, he said, and I quote, uh, good at grabbing the collar and headbutting in a fight. Uh, so, but he felt that uh, Kyokoshin was very limiting. So, uh, one of the basics and one of the hard, like the core fundamentals of uh, Kudo is that the creation of versatile fighting not just you know point scoring and only several limited strikes like Kyokushin so um, he wanted to create something far more offensive and at the same time defensive so uh, head punches were allowed unlike Kyokushin elbows head butts uh, throws and also joint locks from judo uh, and also Neiwaza so he started to develop the martial art which would be a hybrid of Kyokushin Karate and Judo. Kyokushin would be the foundation and the, the rules would change uh, throughout the years. So uh, he would get techniques also from different martial arts such as Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu and even wrestling. So and thus the Daido Juku was born and protective clothing was introduced like the helmet you see and the gloves uh, because you know headbutts and all that he wanted to um, introduce so I don't know uh, back then if headbutts in Kyokushin were allowed because now they are clearly not allowed so I don't know about his days because as he says you know grabbing the collar and headbutting was his thing so if any karateka knows a little bit about Kyokushin in the past and now uh, please let me know down below so um, Let's talk about the organization and how it came to be. So the Daido Joku organization uh, was born in on February 17th, 1981. And the first dojo ever of Kudo or Daido Joku was uh, opened in Miyagi. It was called Karate Do Daido Joku. So uh, it was also called Kakuto Karate or Combat 
karate. Um, in 1981, they hosted the first karate championship, and during the 80s, so it was founded in 81, so the early 80s, and th all throughout until the 90s, it had a booming uh, in the martial arts scene in Japan for its practicality and also just the aesthetics and what it consisted of because. You know, Japanese, they're very proud of their judo and at the same time they're very proud of their karate and this man has merged uh, the two and I would say he went a step uh, beyond what is called Nippon Kenpo because Nippon Kenpo with the Ippon system, once the fight goes to the ground, if you are in a good position for ground and pound or like a pin, um, the referee would end it and he would give you an Ippon but in Kudo it is a bit, it goes a little bit more beyond that in terms of Newaza. So um, it became so popular that uh, it even helped K1 and the U series promotion in, Jap in Japan. So um, even uh, they felt so comfortable with it or so confident with it that uh, Kudoka Mi Minoki Ichihara wanted to go to the UFC because prior to that no Japanese was on the UFC um, they were far more busy with Pride because um, I believe Pride was established in September of 93 while UFC was established I believe November or December of 93 just a few months after that so um, in Japan you had Pride that was the big thing uh, no one would go to the West until uh, Minoki Ichihara even before Ensign Inoue and all of these people. So he went to the UFC and uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know this, he lost to Hoist Gracie. So uh, during the 1990s, all throughout, uh, with Daido Joku would, held, would hold a kickboxing event known as The Wars and they were centered up around the full contact gloved karate. So it was like karate slash uh, MMA and uh, the media a lot of the people would it was very popular i would say around the media so uh, after the after 1995 it slowly started to take become its own thing and in 1995 uh, the karate do daido joku association became kakuto karate international federation of daido joku so um from the mid 1990s, the 1995 and onwards, they would move to a more uh, of a not secluded, but like their own media centric promotion, their own thing. Uh, it was safe and practical. Uh, Daido Joku, they were aiming that to establish or what Azuma wanted to establish. So in 2001, the founder uh, held an official press conference um, in order to really structure the style and promote it even further and thus the name Kudo was born. Before that it was called Daido Joku Karate Do uh, and launched the first world championship and this this is the thing um, a lot of martial arts are suffering with for example the Turkic wrestling um, even like Shiram all these when they started to host these world championships it's because their body of structure became far more pronounced very similar to the IJF and also IBJJF that's why they are very much out there and there's nothing that could take them down it's because of they held these press conferences very similar to Takashi Azuma because obviously this is where he got the idea from and thus you know you create this uh, international federation that will make the art not only worldwide and promoting it constantly but also very hard to be taken down or to be rivaled with something that will literally wipe it off of existence for example catch wrestling it's a great martial art obviously very uh, functional and very much sadistic as they like to call it but it is not as uh, present or as popular as judo and uh, BJJ and, and all these other grappling arts simply because uh, the body of structure is not as strong as them it's not that they are better arts but it is this particular this is something that's needed uh, in order to unite it all around the world and also keep it very much alive and strong and growing and uh, Takashi Azuma clearly saw that and he did this uh, instead of being this uh, boxing event karate events sending someone to ufc or whatever it was a little bit scattered all over the place but it was 
you know, when you intermingle with a lot of these other styles where they are trying to take a competition to a particular direction, this is where a lot of styles tend to, you know, dissipate. But since he created a clear structure for Kudo, it is still very much alive and growing. Uh, it is very big in Russia, even bigger than in Japan. So um, this tells you something. And also it is practiced in over 50 countries. So uh, this is the direction that it's going. It's, uh, it's an MMA. Uh, that's, in my opinion, very functional and also at the same time very safe. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only and please do not check out do not forget to check out Josh Simon's shop for historical t-shirts and historical articles. Tomorrow I'll come out with Judo vs Kudo to talk more details, regulations, rules and also approach to takedowns. This was Shady and thank you for listening.